it is a deadly virus. There's the current rate of fatality is around 50 to 60 percent when you look across all the populations in those three West Africa countries that are the most hard hit by it. Uh, but it's in some regions is as high as 90 percent fatality rate. Ebola is a virus that's carried not by coughing and sneezing like so many of the viruses that we're accustomed to, but it's through the direct contact with blood and other kinds of secretions uh, from a person that's infected. Typically they don't shed the virus until they actually already have symptoms, but it'll be through blood, blood products, breast milk, uh, saliva, after, with sexual intercourse, that kind of thing. Anything where there's the spread of secretions. If virus enters my body, um, it, I probably won't become ill with it for eight or ten days, is the average. The, but it can be as short as two days or as long as 21 days. And that's the reason, for example, you might read a news report from one of those uh, West Africa countries that says that patient X was hospitalized there and has died, the body's been removed, and now that hospital is essentially shut down and quarantined for 21 days. The reason is because after that period of time, you wouldn't have expected any of those people that uh, were exposed to that person to become uh, ill. The thing that's different about this outbreak is that it's also involving large cities. And Lagos, Nigeria, where one man traveled from uh, Liberia to Lagos, Nigeria, Lagos has 21 million people. It's got a, it's got a, a, a major airport, a modern airport, and there's they're just one flight away from Europe and from maybe two flights from the United States. So the fact that it's in a major urban area makes it different than the Ebola from the 1970s, for example, or the sporadic outbreaks, because that was in rural areas and people don't tend to travel much. Borders cannot be secure there. If you ask somebody from the Democratic Republic of Congo, they'll say that uh, no, we're secure because we've secured our borders. Well, you can't secure borders because it's uh, lots of very remote areas. But the thing that would really be important to watch for, particularly for those of us in the healthcare community, is ask about their travel history. There's no drug treatment for it and there's no immunization for it. The treatment for somebody with Ebola virus is that you, if, if they need fluids, you give them fluids. If, you, if they're not breathing on their own, you put them on a ventilator and breathe for them. If they're bleeding, you give them blood. It's just good, meticulous medical care. Again, not, I'm sure one of the things that contributes to the high fatality rate in West Africa is the fact that they don't have that good intensive care type support for a person when they get this illness. It is highly contagious. And one of the things that you, a West African custom is that the people take care of their, their own deceased people. Here they go off to undertakers and are embalmed and different kinds of things. In these uh, African nations, they take their deceased loved one, they wash their body, they prepare it for the burial ceremony, and so they come in contact because the person's infectious even after they're dead.